Now we come to a summary on how to recognize rhythm. First, we have to decide whether this is a regular or an irregular rhythm. And then, we look at the rate and estimate the rate and decide whether this is a tachycardia, a bradycardia or a normal rate. And then we look at the QRS complex, whether this is a broad or a narrow complex QRS. Whether the QRS has the same shape, always has the same shape, or there are many shapes of QRS complex. After that, we look at the P, whether P is present or absent. And if the P is present, we have to decide whether the P shape is normal or not normal. Then we look at the PR interval, whether the PR interval is normal, prolonged or shortened. After that, we look at the relationship between P and QRS, whether P always followed by the QRS complex. Now let's do some exercise. Okay, the first one. So looking at this ECG strip. First, is it regular? Yes, it is regular. What about the rate? So the rate is about 300 over 4, which is 75 beats per minute, which is normal rate. And the QRS complexes are normal. P and PR normal and always followed by QRS complex. So the answer is the normal sinus rhythm. Now the second one. Is it regular? Yes, it is regular. The rate is about 300 over 2.5 bit boxes, which is about 120 bits per minute, which is a tachycardia. And the complexes, the QRS complexes are narrow. The P and PR are normal and always formed by QRS complex. So this is a sinus tachycardia. Okay, this one. Is it regular? Yes, it is regular. And the rate is about 300 over 2 equal to 150 bits per minute, which is tachycardia. And the complexes are narrow. The P and P are normal and always followed by QRS. So this one is a sinus tachycardia. It is a little bit tricky here because it is so tachycardic. The P wave and T wave appears to be so close, but the PR is still within five small boxes. So this one, it is regular. The rate is about 40 beats per minute, which is bradycardic. The complexes are narrow and the P and PR are looks normal and always followed by QRS. So the answer is sinus bradycardia. So how about this one? Is the rhythm regular? So you can see here R to R intervals are not of the same length. So this is an irregular rhythm. What about the rate? Because this is an irregular rhythm, so we count how many R in 30 bit boxes. So here we have 9 R's in 30 bit boxes, making it 90 bits per minute. The complexes are narrow and P is not present. Even though we can see something like wiggly wiggly shape, like P wave, but there is no well defined P wave. So there is no P presence. So the answer is atrial fibrillation. Now we go to the next one. Is it regular? Not really. There's one irregular bit with narrow complex and an abnormal P. The P is look like inverted. So otherwise it look regular. So the rate is about 75 bits per minute which is normal. The complexes are narrow and the P and P are are normal and always followed by QRS complex except for that one the P looks not really normal so this one is a sinus rhythm with unifocal premature arterial contraction 
of PAC. How about this one? This one also looks regular with one abnormal beat and this abnormal beat is an ectopic beat. The beat is white complex. Otherwise, it looks regular with rate of about 100 beats per minute which is normal. The other complexes are narrow and P and PR are normal and always followed by QRS except for that one ectopic beat. So the answer is sinus rhythm with unifocal premature ventricular contraction. Here we say it is from the ventricle because the ectopic beat has white complex. Now we have more ectopic beats and this time the, there are two ectopic beats and both look the same broad complex and same morphology on the same ECG strip. So this one is a sinus rhythm with unifocal premature ventricular contraction. A unifocal here means there's only one focus causing the ectopic beats. And here we can see two ectopic beats which are multiple in shapes on the same ECG lead. So this one is a sinus rhythm with multifocal premature ventricular contraction. How about this one? So this one we can see that the R to R intervals are regular. So this is a regular rhythm. What about the rate? So the rate is about 300 over 5 which is 60 beats per minute. The complexes are narrow. P is present. PR always prolong more than 5 small boxes. But the PR interval are always of the same length. P always followed by QRS complex. So this one is a first degree AV block. In first degree AV block, even though the PR is prolonged, P is always being conducted. There is no drop beat. Now how about this one? Is it regular? Initially it looks regular until suddenly there is a misbeat. There is no R wave. So this one, there is a presence of drop beat. The rate is about 60 beats per minute. The complexes are narrow. The P is present. The PR interval is prolonged and is getting longer and longer and then suddenly we found that the P is not conducted. So the P wave is not always followed by QRS because of the drop beat. So the answer is, it is a second degree AV block type 1, which is a Wankerbach phenomenon. Here you can see that P is not conducted. There is no QRS complex after P. So this is a drop beat. So here we have an almost similar rhythm. So you can see that the R to R interval is regular. However, some of the P's are not conducted, meaning that the P is not followed by QRS complex. So this one, it is regular with drop bits. The rate is about 85 bits per minute. The complexes are narrow and P is present. The PR interval is normal. As compared to the previous one, the PR interval here is normal. In Mobis type 1, the PR interval is getting prolonged and more prolonged until there is a drop bit. Here, the PR interval is normal but there is presence of drop bit. So this one is a second degree AV block, Mobis type 2. In Mobis type 2, it is a disease of his passenger system. So some of the P wave is not conducted. However, the PR interval is normal because the AV node is normal. Let's have a look at this one. So here we can see that the R to R intervals are regular. So this is a regular rhythm. The rate is about 40 bits per minute. Therefore, it is bradycardic. The complexes are narrow. Then we can see that the P is present. It was 
it is normal in shape. But how about the PR interval? So we can see that the P and QRS complex, the relationship was like a little bit chaotic. And then if we look closely, we can see that R to R is regular, while P to P is also regular, but both occur at their own rate. There is like no association at all. Therefore, the P is completely not conducted. So you can see here, P to P intervals are regular and R to R are regular. So the answer is third degree AV block with junctional escape rhythm. Here we say that it is from junctional escape rhythm because the QR complexes are narrow. So how about this one? So here we can see that the R to R interval is regular and P to P interval is also regular. Some of the P is actually inside the QRS complex, like in the first QRS complex. However, there is no association between P and QRS complex. So we can say that there is atroventricular disassociation. And this happened in third degree heart block. So this is a third degree AV block with ventricular escape rhythm. So here we say it is from ventricular escape rhythm because the QRS complexes are wide. So now let's have a look on the AV block. So we have here first degree AV block when this, in which there is some delay in the conduction. This is usually caused by AV node disease, enhanced vagal tone, myocardial infarction, myocarditis, sometimes it's because of electrolyte problems or drug. And in first degree AV block, even though the PR is prolonged, P is always conducted, meaning that there is no drop beat in first degree AV block. As compared to second degree AV block, some of the P waves are blocked from conducting a QRS complex. Therefore, there is drop beat. In Mobis type 1, there is progressive prolongation of PR interval until there is a drop beat. Then the PR interval resets and the cycle repeats. And in Mobis type 1, it is usually due to reversible conduction block at the AV node. Malfunctioning AV node will become progressively fatigued until finally it fails to conduct an impulse. And then after that, the cycle repeats. As in Mobis type 2, the PR interval is similar but there is a number of non-conducted P or drop bits. This is because in Mobis type 2, it is because of the disease of the distal conduction system or his Purkinje system. So some of the impulses fail to be conducted. The PR interval in Mobis type 2 is normal because the AV node is normal. In third degree AV block, a complete heart block, none of the P wave is conducted. So we can see that the P and QRS complexes are seen independently. So there is atroventricular dissociation. However, the rhythm is usually maintained by junctional or ventricular escape rhythm. So let's see a new one. So this one, you can see that the rhythm is regular. The rate is about 150 beats per minute, therefore it is tachycardic. The QRS complexes are narrow and no P wave is seen. So this one is supraventricular tachycardia. In this one, the rhythm is also regular. The rate is about 200 beats per minute and the complexes are narrow. No P wave are seen. So this is also a supraventricular tachycardia. Let's try another one. So this one, it is a regular rhythm. The rate is about 100 beats per minute. The complexes are narrow. And the P wave, there is a typical sawtooth appearance due to re entrant rhythm in the right or left atrium. And this one is atrial flutter, which is one of the supraventricular tachycardias. So let's have a new one. So this one, you can see that 
the rhythm is regular the rate is about about 200 beats per minute which is tachycardic and the complexes are broad so this is a regular broad complex tachycardia there is no p wave seen so this is a ventricular tachycardia This is also a similar rhythm. You can see that it is regular and tachycardic with heart rate of about 200 beats per minute. The QRS complex has a broad and no P wave is seen. So this is also a regular broad complex tachycardia which is seen in ventricular tachycardia which is very scary situation. This one is also regular broad complex tachycardia and this is also a ventricular tachycardia however not all regular broad complex tachycardias are ventricular tachycardia the diagnosis involves a distinction between two main entities which are ventricular tachycardia and supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy i hope you still remember about supraventricular tachycardia with aberrancy. However, in case of doubt, treat the patient as having ventricular tachycardia. Okay, now we have a complex which is very disorganized. Um, don't know whether there is QRS complex or P wave. So this one is a very disorganized, irregular deflection of varying amplitude. There is no identifiable P, no QRS complexes or T wave. So this one is ventricular fibrillation. So in this one, there is also disorganized, irregular deflection of varying amplitude. So this is also a ventricular fibrillation, which is fine. How about this one? This is a flat line, also known as a system. Looking at the rhythm in clinical setting, we always ask ourselves whether this is a sinus rhythm or an arrhythmia, whether it is a stable or unstable rhythm, whether it is a tachycardia or a bradycardia, whether this needs electrical or medical therapy, and if we decide for electrical therapy, whether it needs a defibrillation or a cardioversion.